So for today, we will just start off with your inverse trigonometry. Basics, I will just start. How much ever you people are able to understand, until then we'll stop it. Okay, no issues. Either way, your exam is postponed. So we'll go slow, no issues. Okay, so because trigonometry and inverse trigonometry, you just need to spend more time. Uh, it is not like I will give you certain formulas and you can directly apply in any of the questions. There are like multiple things which needs to be worked on. Every day when you practice only, it automatically comes. Else you won't remember what to be applied back okay? firstly so in your trigonometry when i started i just mentioned on your sine tan cos and uh, your uh, all this this is all silver teacups all silver teacups or like or like whichever form you're using in this first quadrant all the all are like positive in second quadrant only sine is positive third quadrant only tan is positive fourth quadrant only cos is positive first quadrant means it is from 0 to 90 degrees or 0 to pi by 2. Okay. Second quadrant means pi by 2 to pi. Third quadrant means pi to what is this? 3 pi by 2. This is for 270. This is going to be 2 pi. 2 pi. Okay. So this is what the four quadrants are. The first quadrant all are positive. Second quadrant only sine is positive. Third quadrant only tan is positive. Fourth quadrant only cos is positive. Fine. And then I had discussed on what is for sine, cos and tan. Okay. And it starts from 0 degrees. 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Right? Okay. What is sine 0? 0. Sine 30? Yes. What is sine 30? What is sine 30, guys? Online? Sushti? Ah, what is sine 45? <laughs> yeah. See everything and tell. This is going to be root 3 by 2. This is going to be 1. Cos 0 is going to be 1. Cos 30 is going to be root 3 by 2. This is going to be 1 upon root 2. This is going to be half. This is going to be 0. And tan 0 is going to be 0. Sine by cos. Sine by cos is going to be 0. This is going to be root 3, this is going to be 1, this is going to be what? Root 3. This is 1 upon root 3, this is root 3. This is going to be infinity. Okay. So, sin cosecant. Cosecant. Okay. The reciprocal of sin is cosecant. The reciprocal of cos is secant. The reciprocal of tan is 1 upon sin, 1 upon secant, 1 upon tan. Sorry. 1 upon cos, 1 upon tan. Fine. Then I had explained about your identities sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. Next identity sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. After this, what are the next identities? What again? Sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. Then what again? Not forget things. Yes, who is there online? 1 plus tan square theta equal to cot square theta. Sorry, uh, secant square. Sorry, my bad. Secant square theta. 1 plus tan square theta equal to secant square theta. Or secant square theta minus tan square theta equal to either of the ways it is over. Okay. 1 plus cot square theta equal to cosecant square theta. Or cot. cot. 1 plus cot square theta. So secant square theta minus cot square theta equal to 1. These are your basic trigonometric identities basic trigonometric identities through which we had done a lot of problems in the past, right? And tan theta can be written as sin theta divided by cos theta and cot theta can be written by cos theta divided by sin theta, right? This we had done. These are your basics, very basics. Okay. Now, if I'm having something of this sort, sin of minus theta, this can also be written as minus sin theta, minus sin theta. Cos of minus theta is equivalent to cos theta. It is not minus, it is equal to cos theta. Tan of minus theta will be equal to minus tan theta. And the same will hold good for the reciprocal of These are called as the opposite angles. Opposite angles. Opposite angles. Now, if it is like reciprocal angle, sine of 90 minus theta. Yes, sine 90 minus theta. What is it? Online, sine 90 minus theta, cos theta. Okay, sine 90 minus theta is cos theta. Cos of 90 minus theta is sin theta. Cos of 90 minus theta is sin theta. Then you are having tan of 90 minus theta that is cot theta. This is called as reciprocals. Reciprocal angle. Reciprocal angle. Or complementary angle. So you can take it as complementary. Complementary angles. Complementary. Okay. 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 Then we need to know something about your what is sin 2 theta. Sin 2 theta equal to 2 sin theta cos theta. Cos 2 theta is equal to um, 1 minus sin square theta. 1 minus 
minus sin square theta. Sorry, one minus two sin square theta or two cos square theta minus one. It can also be this, or it can be this, or it can be one minus tan square theta. One minus tan square theta. Two minus. Yes, I can get one minus. I get some remember it. Since I am one minus tan square theta divided by one plus tan square theta. So all these are equal unto cos two theta. Cos two theta. And tan two theta can be written as two tan theta divided by one minus tan square theta. One minus tan square theta. Square theta. Okay. Now all these are certain important things that you need to remember. Okay, sir. Some people will be still wondering why am I learning all these trigonometry and everything? Is it really necessary? Okay. So trigonometry is such a kind of a subject where it is being used in real life, but not um, you are not able to visualize it or you do not know exact application. For example, how many of you people are addicted to mobile gaming? No. Mobile gaming, you don't do it. No. Or like you play any. Uh, football or basketball as many of you people play right so whenever you want to kick a ball from one location to another or that person is in a different angle obviously you will do a certain mind calculation before kicking the ball at what force you have to hit which angle how much how much of angle should you give the or the elevation should go in, in such a way so that it goes and drops over here drops over here exactly so all these things are nothing but the trigonometry which is getting involved uh, unknowingly unknowingly now not only here when you play a game so when there is something like a shooting range or something you need to exactly calculate at which angle if there is something like a wind speed you need to calculate that and then shoot or even if you want to find out the height of the tower something like that this is what the basic thing what they teach in school when you want to find the height of this building a person is standing on the building and you need to find the height of the building the given is the angle and this is the hypotenuse so find out the height they will tell you need to find out the height so all these things we were doing else apart from this there are certain other applications also yeah it is being used in astronomy astronomy how do i tell it astronomy okay so let us take the example of yesterday only you know for chandra and three so the uh, lander has to land on the surface of the moon okay. they started reducing the speed from around 3000 uh, 3000 miles per hour or kilometers per hour sorry 3000 meters per second all to almost nearly zero meter per second and they then they started reducing the altitude. Then they started reducing the altitude. And what they were doing is they were giving the thrusters were turned on in like the diagonal fashion and in the downward fashion so that it is getting balanced. So now those kind of aligning of the thrusters, they cannot like normally clip the thrusters in any direction and tell okay, it is aligned and go. Obviously, you need to make some calculation and see exactly in which angle it is. And at which angle, if I keep it, it is going to adjust itself. So here also the uh, implementation of trigonometry is that now you might tell so it is only in engineering no sir what is the purpose we are also learning no so for mba why are we learning all or for mca why are we learning this in your computer applications or whatever designing you're doing if you are designing a video game if you are designing a video game there is something called as 3d model 3d model so in that 3d modeling obviously you need to take all these into account for example if you are making a jump uh everyone would have played the, the game mario right when you are actually pressing the space bar the mario jumps only if you press along with the space if you press the arrow mark then it goes front right so until like which height it should jump and if it jumps below that then what should happen or if it is having a flag then at which direction it should jump and uh, if it is come if it is having something like a drag then what we should do how are we going to use the balls and everything or if there is something like a jaw coming out so many, many things this is in terms of only a single game i'm telling right now there are many more games uh, the more frequent one used was subway Service, which we are also being used in that also you need to calculate angles you need to do right and left everywhere this kind of calculation is being used so calculation plays a very important role uh, when you actually build that kind of a game structure then the mathematical use cases will be more right now you're just in the beginning stage and you haven't explored that field right now so you you don't exactly feel what is the use of i understand it absolutely fine no issue now trigonometry is direct when something is given directly then you are finding the angles then you are doing this but inverse trigonometry is not that way where you have been given something called as sine inverse of uh, sine inverse of 1 okay what is sine inverse of 1 now sine 90 is sine of 90 is 1 now i am telling sine inverse it becomes of 1 becomes 9 this becomes the answer so it is nothing but whatever answer you got by doing this 
up for sin 0, cos 0, sin 90, cos 90 and everything. All these are going to be the reciprocal values or the inverse value, inverse values. So are we going to play only with values? Only with value means it is going to be completely easy. MCA paper is going to be dead easy. Or your match paper is going to be easy. But here they will play around with something called as x, y, 1 plus x square, 1 minus x square, root of that, root of this. They will keep on giving you different types of scenarios here. Now, what should I really learn here? Now, you should see the sign. I said sign from where to where it is going to be positive. So, you can have the sign values from what? Here it is going to be negative 1 to positive 1. In these two quadrants, sign is positive. Sign is positive. So, I am having something called as a domain and a range. Domain and a range. Okay. And in your inverse, you have something called as functions. So, y equal to sine inverse of x. This is a function. And my sign can be from minus 1 to plus 1. This is the range it has. The maximum range. And in order to have this minus 1, it will be from minus 90 to plus 9. This is the range of it. This is the domain. Domain is nothing but the value. The end value. This is nothing but the angle. Using which angle are we going to get this domain? Okay. Cost inverse of x. Similarly, I can have the value from minus 1 to plus 1. Minus 1, it can start from 0. And the plus 1, it can go up to 5. Tan inverse of x. It is from minus infinity to plus infinity. Plus infinity. Or this, you can put it like this. And even cot inverse of x is minus infinity less than equal to x less than equal to positive infinity. Okay. The same thing for tan inverse of x, it is starting from minus 90 to plus 90. Cot inverse of x, it starts from 0 to pi. Cosecant inverse of x, it is going from x lesser than equal to minus or x uh, greater than equal to 1. What is the purpose here? Because sin 0, uh, 30, 45, 60, 90. Sin 0 becomes 0. Sin 30 becomes half. Sorry, sin 30 becomes half. This becomes 1 upon root 2. This becomes root 3 by 2. This becomes uh, 1. Okay. If it is cosecant, it is going to be inverse of it. So, this is going to be infinity. Infinity. This is going to be uh, 2. This is going to be root 2. This is going to be 2 upon root 3. This is going to be 1. 1. So, now, in order to make your cosecant inverse from minus 1 to plus 1, the value shouldn't be 0. The value shouldn't be 0. That is what I have mentioned here. Where y is not equal to 0. y is not equal to 0. And it can lie between minus 90 to plus 9. Plus 90. The same thing whenever it is secant inverse. Secant inverse, it is going to be cos inverse, cos reciprocal. So obviously for 90, cos 90 it will become infinity. So the y value shouldn't be equal to 90. Then. So the range lies between 0 to pi. The range of like cos and secant are same, but the y value shouldn't be equal to 0. Y value shouldn't be equal to 90 in this case. That's all. Okay. So these are your phase 6. Phase 6 of your range and domain. Range and domain. From which range to which range your sign is positive. From where to where is your cos positive, tan positive, cot positive, cosecant positive, secant positive. Or the available range where you can play around. Where you can play. Fine. These are some of your basics. Okay. Then you are having some properties or some basic formulas which you can remember. Okay. So that it will be useful for you. The first one is sine inverse of sine x sine inverse of sin x will be equal to x. Means this sine and this sine gets cancelled. Tan inverse of tan x equal to x. This tan, this tan gets cancelled. Secant inverse, this secant, this thing gets cancelled. This becomes x. Cos inverse, this gets cancelled out. Cot inverse, this gets cancelled out. So secant inverse, this gets cancelled out and with x. This is for your property number 1. Property number 1. Fine. Now, next. Property number 2. Sine inverse of 1 upon x. Sine inverse of 1 upon x can also be written as cosecant inverse of x. Okay. You are reciprocating it. You are reciprocating sine and also you are reciprocating the elements inside that sign. If it is 1 by x, this becomes x. The same thing, if it is tan 1 upon x, it becomes cot reciprocal, becomes cot x. Secant reciprocal becomes cos. Cos reciprocal becomes secant. Cosecant reciprocal becomes sine. Cot reciprocal becomes only the values also gets interchanged. Okay. This is your problem. These kind of things, you will be using it on your uh, PGCT exam. Okay. The basic things you will be using. Very difficult questions they might not ask but I don't know if you will find these questions also difficult. Let us give a try. Okay, no issue. We'll try to simplify as much as possible. Okay. So, property number 3, sine inverse of minus x. Even in your normal trigonometric function, we were seeing sine of minus x equal to something, cos of minus x equal to something. Here, sine inverse of minus x equal to minus of sine inverse x. Tan inverse of minus x equal to minus of tan inverse x. But secant and cos, 
will be having pi minus secant inverse x because here it is going to be a positive value. It is going to be a positive value only. So I'm going to write it as pi minus secant inverse of x. Secant inverse. The same holds good for cos inverse of x. It is going to be pi minus cos inverse of x. Part inverse of minus x, same. Part in cosecant inverse of minus x, fine. And this property, fourth property is very important. It will be used in many of your problems. Whenever you come across this, you will be substituting it. Sin inverse of x plus cos inverse of x equal to pi by 2. Okay, sin plus cos pi by 2, tan plus cot. The tan plus its reciprocal is going to be 90. Sin plus its, okay, okay. Uh, sin plus cos is going to be 90. Secant plus cosecant is going to be equal to 90. And these are your things which you should remember. This is very important. It will be used regularly. Even this will be used regularly. Minus of this and um, even this will be used. The first property. All these properties are being used regularly in your PGCT. That's the reason I'm just mentioning it. Then tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of y can be written as tan inverse of x plus y divided by 1 minus xy. Not only here, in your actual trigonometry also, we had a uh, rule like this, right? Yeah. So it was something like tan of x plus y is equivalent to tan of x plus tan y divided by 1 minus tan x tan. This was the formula in your normal trigonometry. In inverse trigonometry also, tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of y equal to tan inverse of x plus y divided by 1 minus x y. Same thing. No, no change. Same thing if it is minus, it becomes x minus y divided by 1 plus x. The sign changes. Fine. This is your property number 5. This is also being repeatedly used. Sixth one, it is not regularly used, but yes, you can just remember it. Sin inverse of of x plus sin inverse of y equal to sin inverse of x root of 1 minus y square plus y root of 1 minus x square. Not so important. <laughs> and the other things you should remember is what is cos 2 theta? Cos 2 theta is equal to uh, 1 minus 2 sin square theta or 2 cos square theta minus 1 or 1 minus tan square theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. Okay. It can be of these three cases. Sin 2 theta can be 2 sin theta cos theta. 2 sin theta cos theta. Okay. So these are some things which you can remember so that it helps you in your actual problem solving. Okay. Now, let us take up some examples. Okay.